Hello and welcome to the main course. Dish up some food for thought. Today we are learning more about clownfish, or Nemo's as they are known to most people, named for their almost comical swimming style compared to other fish. This video shows a pair of clownfish busy laying eggs in my aquarium years ago. Before the eggs are laid, a patch on the rock, shell or other surface is cleaned out. The larger fish is the female and she lays a number of eggs at a time by means of an ovipositor a thin tube that sticks the eggs onto the rock, while she hangs relatively still above the rock in the water. The male swims over the eggs from time to time to fertilize them. They take turns like this until the brood contains a few hundred to a few thousand eggs, depending on the specific species and size of the fish. The eggs are then cared for for about 8 to 10 days, mostly by the male. This period is dependent on the water temperature. They take longer to hatch in colder water. Clownfish, like many species of snails, worm, other fish and especially plants, are what is called sequential hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites are organisms for which an individual can produce both male and female gametes. They therefore do not really have two strictly separate genders. Sequentially hermaphroditic indicates that the male and female gametes are not produced simultaneously, but that it changes over time. In the clownfish case, all young fish would be male. In time, the dominant fish in a group would become female and pair off with one of the males. If, for some reason, the female falls away, the most dominant remaining fish would become female, even if it was the male of the pair. Thus, if Nemo does not acquire a stepmom quite soon, the story can get a bit uncomfortable. The 26 different clownfish species are involved in a special symbiotic relationship with a small number of anemone species, namely that the clownfish can host in between the anemone's tentacles. Some clownfish species can host only in one specific anemone species, while others have a larger variety of possible hosts. Clownfish have an unusually thick mucus layer on their skin, which protects them from the anemone's poisonous tentacles, while the territorial clownfish protects the anemone from would-be predators. The clownfish also supplies the anemone with food in the form of waste products. The pair will continuously care for the brood by picking away detritus and keeping the water around the eggs fresh and aerated. Here are some photos of two different broods over time. The eggs slowly change color from a bright orange to a dark brown as the embryos use up the yolk sacs to grow. In time, two black eyes become visible in each egg. These become silvery when light shines on them. When the eggs are ready to hatch, most of them will have the silvery sheen to them. They usually hatch during night time, shortly after dusk, and are then left to fend for themselves, trying to obtain small plankton as food and trying to prevent becoming slightly larger plankton as food. A large healthy pair can easily lay around a thousand eggs every 10 to 14 days. In a future video, we will look at the fry after they've hatched and what they require to survive. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to stay informed of new content.